Good afternoon, beautiful friends. It's Jayashri with the Finding Freedom podcast. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. And let's go ahead and jump right into this week's topic. A beautiful listener asked to discuss when to speak up and when to stay silent. Thank you for this great question. Communication is quite the topic. It's really the foundation of all of our relationships and it can be quite a sticky subject filled with landmines and there's so much advice surrounding the topic of how to communicate, when to communicate, what to let roll off our backs, etc. And so what I will do is come back, as I always do, to presence. Because no matter how much we learn about how to communicate and when to stay silent and everything in between, if we're not present, none of it will really have any impact. So all relationships are ultimately with ourselves because all that we are doing is projecting. Regardless of our intentions, we're only seeing through the lens of our conditioning. And as you know, some animals see in black and white, we see in color, it doesn't mean that what they see is wrong or what we see is wrong. It means that the world is in the mind and everyone is a mirror for us. So, of course, I'm going to say that if you're in, a, in an abusive relationship, get out. Don't, don't be a doormat. With that aside, no matter what the relationship is that we're in, whether it be romantic or with family or co-workers or neighbors or friends, we choose who we want to spend our time with. And it is said that no man is my enemy and no man is my friend, but every man is my teacher. And if we can really look at this in that fashion, it can take the charge out of everything. Taking the expectations out of the relationship and seeing that no matter what the relationship looks like, if we look at it from a place of curiosity and finding as like a detective Everything very interesting because that which triggers us shows us where our own blockages are. So let's say someone is attempting to set a boundary with us and we find ourselves getting very reactive. We raise our voice. We start to speak or talk over the person. We get a little aggressive. We are unable to take in what they're saying. This shows that we have a blockage with regard to another person setting a boundary with us. So no matter what it is, that's just an example. When we are triggered, instead of looking to change the other person or control the other person, we look within and we see where we have some healing to do. And what is healing? It's bringing into compassionate, conscious awareness into the light that which we have pushed down, which we have refused to look at. And I do work with my clients on how to develop a technique that integrates your inner mentor, your inner guru, so that you are able to work with the various aspects of yourself, generally parts from childhood, which 
devised defense mechanisms for protection, we work with those parts and we heal those parts. And that's a whole nother podcast, but feel free to reach out if you would like to do some of that work with me. And so back to the point, which is to do that inner work of healing instead of expecting other people to dance around us so that they don't hit our sore spots. (laughs) Because we can, or if we decide, okay, this person is triggering me, I'm going to discontinue this relationship and go find somebody else. Go work for someone else, go find a new mate, find a new friend, whatever it is. We cannot run (laughs) from this stuff. Wherever you go, there you are. And uh, so truly, these things are doorways to our freedom because without, we cannot transcend that which we do not see. And in awareness practice, we use everything that causes us to suffer so that we can see how we cause ourselves to suffer, drop it, and thereby end suffering. This is evolution. And then we welcome everything that allows us to see our blind spots and heal them. So when do we speak up and when do we stay silent? Well, first I'll say, take the pressure off yourself. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Most important point right there. You can't make a mistake. There are no mistakes. Second, I would say that if there is an issue that comes up frequently or it's the first time, actually, most importantly, if it's the first time and somebody's crossing a boundary, you want to say something right away. Otherwise, you're teaching that person that it's okay to repeat that behavior and they can't read our minds. So in that case, I would say speak up be to the point, and if the person doesn't respond, well, then you need to evaluate, reset your boundary, and perhaps if it's serious enough, you do need to walk away. Thirdly, our words are actually a very small percentage of our communication. And in presence, we are like a light that infuses everything and everyone around us with love. We see through the ego of another. We don't take it too seriously. Because we are complete and whole. Nobody else can complete us. Nobody else holds that which we seek, which is simply to know ourselves. So no one else will ever be able to rise up to an impossible standard or expectation of making us happy and healing our wounds through their love. We really must go within, take excellent care of our tempo, our body, and all the levels that I always mention, physically, mentally, spiritually, diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, And in this way, we realize that we are everything and nothing, and that we are not the personality, 
We are not the identity. That's just a mask. And neither is anyone else. So we don't hold weight in others' personalities. We see through the mask. We see through the conditioning, the ego, to the essence of all. And we find that silence is the purest form of union. Osho says 99% of what we say is useless, 99% of what we think is useless, and 99% of what we feel is also useless. We are not the body or the mind or our thoughts. We are the deep, never changing stillness, the infinite, which cannot be described. And we don't want to try. It's so vast. It's infinite. It cannot be put in a box. It cannot be labeled and named. But when we root ourselves in the depth of this powerful, infinite, unknowable mystery, we don't need anything from anyone else. We don't need things to be a certain way. And we do not feel that we are lacking. This is beyond duality. It's freedom. So this may not have been the way you would expect me to answer this question. I dabbled a little bit in the world of form and boundaries and that kind of thing, which is helpful. But really, we can circumvent all of that by rooting ourselves in the formless dimension, the depth of stillness, love, true unconditional love. So I think I'll stop there and let me know if you have any questions or comments or any experiences you would like to share. I'd love to hear what they are. And if you would like to share a question or a topic for a future podcast, feel free to share that too. Feel free to like this, share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, I send you much love, light, and presence. Namaskar. Namaskar.